Hello and welcome to Does Recruiting Fix Everything? I'm Susie Light, Field Training Specialist at Pampered Chef. I'm excited to introduce you to two amazing leaders who embody our mission to enrich lives through the business opportunity. Now in this workshop, you'll learn that yes, recruiting does fix everything and can help you achieve your goals faster. They can't wait to share their tips for sharing the business opportunity, overcoming objections, and how to grow your team. Before we begin, here's what you can expect to learn during this workshop. First, you'll hear about some of the basics of recruiting, then how to recruit your hosts and share the business opportunity. Now the fortune is in the follow-up, so you'll learn tips for timely follow-up and how to overcome objections. And finally, some closing thoughts about sharing our amazing business opportunity. Now, during the presentation, our speakers and members of the Home Office staff will be monitoring the Q&A. So be sure to post your questions pertaining to this topic there. At the end of the presentation, we'll ask the speakers to respond to as many questions as possible during the live Q&A. And now I'm thrilled to introduce your speakers for this workshop. Executive Director Katie Lahuda lives in Montana with her husband and their three children. She has been with Pampered Chef for just under two years and in this time has led her organization to the executive level. Earned two elite level trips and excellence in three categories, including personal recruiting. Katie is also a Founders Award achiever in recruiting this year. Congratulations, Katie. She has discovered her passion in helping others achieve their goals, earn extra income, and raise their quality of life through recruiting. She has truly discovered just how much recruiting is the answer for both her own business success and to be that blessing in other lives as well. It's been such a pleasure learning from Katie as she shared her experience for this workshop. I can't wait for you to learn from her too. Yvonne Bleticia has been pampered chefing for 21 years and was named Circle of Honor Achiever for Recruiting in 2018. She continues to be a top recruiter because she learned that yes, recruiting was the answer to completely turning around her business. After many years of earning excellence awards and incentive trips, she realized that she could gain even more from her business and help others too by focusing fully on their needs and their desires. She feels the best part of the business is sharing it to help others achieve their goals. She's currently the leader of an executive team and they're quickly moving forward to reach their next promotion. She's so proud of the team for what they've been doing and for what they've accomplished already with this change of mindset and taking the action to work together to touch so many more lives with the Pampered Chef. Now I've had the privilege of knowing Yvonne since she started her business and what I love most is she is every bit as excited and passionate about what this business as the about this business as the day she started. So get your hand out ready to take notes. Yvonne, how about you get us started? Well, hello, hello, everyone, and welcome in to learn more about team building. Woo -woo. So let's get started. Does recruiting fix everything? I'd say yes, yes, it does. Not only will you achieve so much more from your business, but so much more faster. If you started because you love products, wanted extra income, or to go on incentive trips, guess what? You get all of those things more quickly as a team builder. The best part about this business is that you can help others change their lives too. I'd like to share a quick story that recently touched my heart from someone on our team. Reve, in just 40 days, fast-tracked not only to director, but also advanced director. The day that she got paid was the same exact day that she needed extra income to put down on her family's very first home purchase. If she wasn't asked, multiple times by my oldest daughter, who is also a leader on our team, the timing would not have been right for her to purchase her home. She was so excited that her commission check could help her family achieve this goal, and she continues to work her business and grow her team. 
This business can change lives in and out of the kitchen in ways we cannot even imagine sometimes. And that's exactly why we need to share our love of Pampered Chef with others, because you never know who needs this opportunity. So let's start with the basics. First, you have to have a strong party schedule in order to be in front of enough people who may even be interested. That is the key for sure. Number one, your lead is your number one host. Your host is your number one lead. Number two, your rock star guest. Number three, your curious guest. So three leads from every party. If you have four parties a week, then that's 12 leads, which can lead to one new team member each week. Don't prejudge. You have to have the just ask attitude, but let them decide for themselves. Speaking from your heart is key. Be you. It's okay to be a little vulnerable and open yourself up to be genuine. Here's a way to remember to connect. There's four tips. You can jot these down if you'd like. Number one, make it personal. Always use their name and why you thought of them. Number two, be excited. The more excited you are, guess what? The more excited they will be too. Number three, the kiss. Keep it simple, sister, or keep it simple, sir. Even though we're excited about lots of reasons why, just share one. A good rule of thumb is if you have to scroll to see the message, it's too long. Number four, ask a question at the end. I think this is the most vital of all four. Our words are very powerful and, and so important when reaching out and responding. You don't want to just give information out, but you want to prompt a response. So let's talk a little bit about all of the amazing rewards that you can get for promoting. In addition to the business, you can help others. There are benefits um, that we're going to talk about in just a moment. So let's talk about, let's talk about those right now. Number one, overrides, more income. Those start with your very first team member. For new consultants in your first 90 days, fast track rewards and cash bonuses. Hamper Chef dollars every time that you recruit. There's also bonus trip points. I love this one. Did you know that you get bonus trip points when you promote to director? Aside from the bonus points that you get when you promote, you can also look forward to increased overrides, opportunity to earn new product samples, and a higher discount on products too. Your recruiter also gets cash bonuses when you promote to a fast track director. One or another of these benefits may be more exciting to you. So remember, when you're sharing, it's not about you at all. Everyone starts for a different reason. So you need to share different reasons why someone may want to try on the Pampered Chef apron and listen to their needs. But there is a bigger perk than all of these things, and that is helping others grow. And now, Katie is going to share with you all about recruiting your host. Take it away, Miss Katie. Yes, thank you, Yvonne. So let's talk about those most likely to join your team, your hosts, right? After all, they've already said yes to Pampered Chef and yes to you as their consultant. The first step is building that relationship with your host. Now, this might not seem like a recruiting step, but it is. You have to build a relationship with them first. So from the moment they book a party, that should be a priority. Getting to know them and letting them get to know you. Ask questions about their life. You can ask about their family, their kids, their husband, right? Ask, you know, are you married? Do you have kids? How old are your kids? Ask about their job. Where do they work? Do they work full-time, part-time? What is it that they do? Ask about their hobbies or other interests. What do you like to do in your free time? Ask about their favorite products. Ask what their experience is with Pamper Jeff. Did they grow up with it in their kitchen? How much do they have in their own kitchen now? The next step in recruiting your host is to plant that seed even before the party starts. This way, throughout the party, you can be watering that seed and helping it grow. 
but you have to plant the seed first. So I like to ask if they have ever thought about doing something like Pampered Chef before. This is really my go-to first question because they'll usually tell me, number one, if they've ever thought about it before, which is important to know, but it also usually gets their first objection out right away. So we're not having to beat around the bush for 10 messages back and forth. You can offer to turn their party into their launch party. This can be super enticing because they're already hosting, right? Why not make the money from it? You can literally offer them the commission from their party. You can also explain the kit coupon options. A lot of people don't know that they can trade some of their free product value to save on one of our new consultant kits. This is a good option for planting the seed because they feel like they have time to think about it and it lets them know that they can save money on the kit, which who doesn't like to save money, right? Make sure that you are asking every single host at least five times throughout the party. And I know this may sound like a lot, but think about if someone approaches you with something completely new, out of left field, something you've never thought about doing. Your gut reaction is usually going to be to say no, right? You're not even really going to consider it. But if they come back again and approach you about it a couple more times, then you'll start to actually think about it. You'll start to imagine what it might be like to do that thing. And that's the magic. You want them to start imagining themselves running this business and imagine what it could be like for them. So these asks are not pushy. You're just showing curiosity about whether this business might be a good fit for them. It's as easy as follow the formula. So this is the formula or layout I use when asking about the business. In the first sentence, I compliment them on what's going well. So this can be that their friends are all joining the group or they're RSVPing to the party, or they did such a good job inviting their friends, or they already have their first order and it's only day one, right? So number one, compliment them. Number two, in the second sentence, you wanna ask a question such as, are you sure you don't wanna give this business a try? Or have you given any more thought to this business, right? So that's the actual ask. And then the third sentence is going to be why. Why are you asking again, right? So I like to say things like, I would love to have someone like you on our team. Or I think you'd be so great at this. Or it looks like you would have a super supportive circle. Or even I would love to have someone as excited as you on our team. But just like Yvonne said, keep the message short. Don't make them scroll. So let's talk about what these five asks might look like. The five times that you want to ask the host. So some prime examples of this are the first time during the first host coaching conversation. This is before the party starts. Thank your host, let her or him know that they can easily turn this into a launch party so they can earn the host rewards as well as the commission. The second ask can be as soon as guests start RSVPing or joining the group. Um, share that the host friends seem super excited. They're already RSVPing or joining the group. Looks like they love Pampered Chef. Ask, are you sure you don't want to give this business a try? The third ask can be as soon as the party sales reach the level needed to earn a kit credit. So let the host know that they just qualified for that kit coupon and ask if they have seen the kits on your personal website. You can even include a link in your message to the Become a Consultant page. Then the fourth ask is during the party as the host interacts. Congratulate the host on a fabulous job that they're doing, getting everyone excited. Share how much fun it would be to have someone as excited as they are on your team. Ask, have you thought any more about this business? And then number five is while you're closing the party. Ask one more time if they thought any further about giving the business a try, even just for 90 days, and that you would love to give them the bookings to help them get started. So let's go back to number four for just a minute. 
When your host is interacting during the party, there are some other prime opportunities to ask. And so let's take a look at a few of those. Some of the additional times you might want to ask your host is when they take initiative or they're following through on the things that you've coached them to do. So a few examples could be if they post something that you didn't ask them to post during your host coaching. And you can say something like, I loved your post today. So fun. Have you given any more thought to this business? Seriously, you're so creative. You would be a natural. And then another example could be when they're helping you get bookings from the party. You can say something like, oh my gosh, you've helped me get two bookings already from your party. You're so good at this. Are you sure you don't want to give this business a try? You're basically doing my job for me. Wouldn't it make sense if you made the commission from your friend's parties instead of me? Another example is when they collect an outside order. You can say something like, good job collecting that outside order. Oh my goodness, you're so good at this. I can't help but think you're so good at hosting. Hosting isn't that different from selling. Are you sure you don't want to just give this business a shot for 90 days? I would love to help you see if this business could fit into your life and be as much of a blessing as it has been to mine. Remember, it doesn't have to be some long, beautifully thought out and written message. The important thing is to be authentic. Proofread, okay, but don't spend 20 minutes on one message and don't overthink it. I think a lot of times we just overthink what to say until we're paralyzed by the fear of messing it up or the fear of hearing no, right? And then we don't even ask. If we don't ask, the answer is always no, okay? It's okay if someone says no. Remember, it's common for that to be their first reaction. But the reality is, if we don't ask, the answer is always no. If we do ask, they just might say yes. So I encourage you to think about all the ways this business has blessed you and your family. Aren't you glad that someone shared the opportunity with you and gave you the chance to say yes? It's important to share not only to help your personal business, but even more important to share so that others can enjoy all the rewards and benefits that you've experienced as well. Think about how powerful the opportunity to share is. For example, when I started, I didn't think we needed the money. All I knew was that I needed something to do that was for me to help me break out of the depression cycle that I was in. Shortly after I started though, my husband's job became undependable. And this business helped us pay bills and put food on the table during that time. We didn't know that was going to happen when I started, but this business literally stopped us from going into debt and getting behind on our bills. This business, I truly believe, saved my life, saved my marriage, and saved my kids' childhood. Because I was not a good mom or wife while I was battling depression. And I can't even imagine where we would be if my kids and my husband had to have dealt with that version of me for very much longer. I have no idea where I would be without this business today. I am so grateful that my director shared this opportunity with me. If she hadn't, I can't even imagine what my current reality might be. I just wanna thank her again and again for just asking me and then not giving up when I told her no and resisted for so long. When I think about that, I realize that it's my responsibility to share this opportunity because there are people out there who need it. There are people who are living paycheck to paycheck or are going further and further into debt every month just trying to pay their bills. There are people who might be like I was, in a depression hole, unable to claw themselves out. There are people who have real pain points in their life that this business could ease. Well, thank you for sharing your heartfelt story, Katie. That was so powerful. Katie talked about how to start having that conversation with your host, planting the seed and watering it by bringing it up at least five times. Another equally important part of recruiting is in your party post. You should be intentional when talking about sharing the business and dropping seeds in your party for the host and for the guest as well. There are about seven ways directly and indirectly 
one each day or so of your party that you can share about the business opportunity. So first day, pre-party day, there always has to be a fun factor going on in the entire flow of your party. Engaging post, even before what I call the meat and potatoes, the product post of your party happens, is one way to help to have some fun and connect with your guests right from the start. An example may be that, what's your favorite summer fun activity? If you're running that theme, or what's your favorite Mexican dish? If you're doing a fiesta theme. For one pot meal, I may ask a, fit, a family favorite recipe that you loved, or maybe you didn't love, and so on. So make sure that you are uh, in line with what your theme is. Another pre-party day, I always share my story about why I started the business, and I include a family picture, so they are connecting with me right away. I also ask them to guess how many parties I've done. They have three chances to comment with their answers, and then I ask them to message me for bonus tickets for our end of the party giveaway, and I'll share the correct answer so I can start chatting with them one-on-one. -on -one. I also ask them to friend me in the description of the party. Someone will actually read it to score bonus tickets, and then I immediately message them a thank you and ask them questions like, have you ever been to a Pampered Chip virtual party before? Are you familiar with our products? If so, I ask them, what's your go-to? What can't you live without that you own a Pampered Chef? I also post a thank you for friending me with a graphic of our products, like, it's always nice to have some more friends showing off our cast iron. Or, we go together like bacon and eggs because we're, we're Facebook friends now, showing off the Rock Rock Grill Stone. Every post is purposeful. It shows off more product, and everyone likes to be recognized. Every time I post this, others friend request me too, and that gives me a chance to chat with more people in the party. Something that I do um, throughout the party is called This Is It for my host. So everyone is encouraged to comment on everything because each night one of my hosts actually comments, This Is It. Whoever commented on that post scores bonus tickets for the end of the party giveaway. So it helps, so my host is engaging and the guests are engaging as well. On day one, I go live and post it or post a two minute recorded video. It's basically like a welcome video, thanking the host, thanking the guests for joining us. I also share host specials and I always ask them to watch what I do for them or someone they know who may be interested in earning extra income or just want to have some extra fun. Day two, I have the host post, are you having fun? Can you tell Yvonne is? I give her some example questions to ask me, um, to ask about the business opportunity and they score big. I always have the host start first. I also have her comment on this. So this is one other way to engage my host as well. Day three, I go live with a recipe demo and I do a Q&A about bookings and the business opportunity. This always sparks lots of interest. I always follow up with everyone who has asked me a question at this time. Although I do a recipe demo, just know that you can do it any which way you choose. I do something called the dad contacts, which is the day after deadline. I give the host wording to reach out to those who clicked going or joined the group, but didn't, purchase, and, but didn't participate to thank them and ask them if they had a chance to look through the post, if they had any questions, or if they wanted to place an order or host for free products. This also tells me if the host would be a potential consultant or whoever friends may be. Katie does a Google form, including, including some pics to engage them into answering questions. Plus, she does a bonus giveaway just for filling it out. So smart in order to get their info if they haven't ordered yet to be able to contact them directly. She's going to come back and share about follow-up and handling objections now. Take it away, Katie. Wow, I loved all of that. Such good ideas and tips. So now that you know how to get people interested and get these conversations started, 
let's talk about how to have those conversations past just starting them. Chances are most people are not going to say yes from the start. We talked about that already, right? A no is not a no. It's an, I don't see how this business can fit into my life yet. So it's our job as the consultant to help people see how this business can fit into their life. I gave you an outline for asking your host, and now I'm going to give you an outline for overcoming objections. So the first sentence should be to validate. Let them know that you hear them, you understand, and that their concern is valid. You can say things like, I definitely understand that, or I get that for sure, or that's understandable, or that's definitely a valid concern. The second sentence should be overcome. Help them see how that isn't a problem. Show them the solution to that concern. And then the third question should always be a question. I mean, the third sentence should always be a question to keep the conversation going. Things like, what would you do with extra income every month? Anything fun? Or have you seen our new consultant kits yet? And don't be afraid to go personal with it. So if they say that they would go on a vacation with the extra income, ask where they would go. This outline helps you frame your private conversations with the potential recruits. And remember, the party is your opportunity to share your story and talk about you and talk about how this business fits into your life. But when you move to a private conversation with someone, it's not about you. This is where you help them to see how it fits into their life. So they don't need to know how you work full time and you have five kids and you go to school and you still run your business. They need to hear the solution for how they can do that. And then avoid overwhelming the person. Don't give them more than what they ask for. So if they have to scroll to read your whole message, they're going to check out real fast. So keep it short and sweet and follow that outline. That's what it's there for. If they ask about commission rate, tell them about the commission rate and then maybe even how you can get a raise with sales volume and promoting. But then that's it. Don't start talking about, oh, but we also get free products and discounts and we can earn trips and bonuses. They didn't ask for all that and it's going to be overwhelming. So they don't need to know that yet. Keep it short and sweet. Now, even with the best conversations, there might be times when somebody stops replying. You know, maybe they need to talk to their husband or wife when they get home or, you know, maybe they just get busy and they forgot to respond back. Whatever it might be, remember that the fortune is in the follow-up. So I actually keep a notebook and it has booking leads in one half and recruiting leads in the other half. So I write down the person's name, I write down the date that we talked and how that conversation ended. So this way I know who I need to follow up with and people aren't falling through the cracks. Right? I don't have a photographic memory, so I need that help. And now here's Yvonne with some final thoughts. Super Katie, thank you, thank you. Well, we're so glad that you could be here with us. And I just wanted to wrap up and share really quick that not only can you find your new team members at your parties, but also outside of them. We just wanted to thank you all for joining us and I wanted to share that up specifically because we hadn't talked about that yet. I was actually someone who never went to a party. I never owned a, a product. I didn't even know what Pamper Chef was. I started not knowing anything at all. And because of our incredible resources, I learned the business and have continued to have success. But I have to say that Pamper Chef is so, so much more than selling kitchen tools. If I had not stepped out of my comfort zone and shared the opportunity with others, I would have never stayed in this business this long. About a month ago, my husband, Brian, who walked along beside me from day one with Pampered Chef, bounced away. I can't even begin to share with you all how much love and support that I felt from Pampered Chef family. 
This business has given our family so many blessings over the years. Not just the trips and the rewards and the income, flexibility, but true friendships and bonds that have been created. A feeling of knowing that if I need someone at any time, they will be there. Not just through the fun, but also through the hard times we sometimes face professionally and personally. And there's nothing that compares to that. You all have this gift that you can share. It's actually very, very powerful. Don't allow your own feelings to stop you from being impactful in somebody else's life. If you are a brand new consultant or you haven't reached out to everyone to let them know that you're a pampered chef, you may be missing people that may be interested in joining our family. Like I mentioned earlier, everyone starts for a different reason. So think right now and write those people down that come to your mind. I'm going to give you a second to jot these, these down. Number one, who loves our products? There's so many who love our products, right? Jot their name down. Number two, who loves to cook? Number three, who hates to cook? That might be your next lead. Number four, who has to cook? Lots of us. Number five, who has to eat? Everyone. Number six, those who love to entertain. Number seven, the life of the party. Number eight, someone who recently lost their job. Number nine, maybe their spouse or significant other lost their job. Now listen to this last one. Do you know anyone who wants to learn how to cook, has never been to a Pembroke Chef party, doesn't own tools, can't afford to start, wants to stay home with their kids, or confided in you that they really need extra income to make ends meet? These last reasons were all of my reasons for starting. I have been able to accomplish all of these things and so, so much more because I was willing to step out of my comfort zone and then share the business with others to help them in their own journey. We want to encourage each and every one of you to do the same and be rewarded with not only the amazing benefits Pampered Chef gives, but also knowing that we are making a difference in lives daily. So, do you think that recruiting fixes everything? Let's hear it! Yes, yes! I, I couldn't agree more. Great job, great, great job. And um, we'll never forget all these wonderful things that you shared, Yvonne and Katie. Thank you for sharing how you enrich lives through the Pamper Chef business opportunity. And, and really thank you for how you shared, how it's enriched your lives as well. I love that. I'm sure everyone has learned something today to help them build a team and grow their business. So let's do a quick recap of everything that was covered today, so much. First, you shared some of the basics of recruiting and tips for recruiting hosts. You taught us how to share the business opportunity with heart and authenticity and helped us understand the value of follow-up and how to overcome objections. And finally, you inspired us to think about all the people, I have goosebumps, <laughs> who could be helped by this business. I encourage everyone to identify at least three things you learned during this workshop that you will take action on right away to build your team. And now it's time to answer some of your questions. Well, hello, welcome back. Wasn't that wonderful? Give them some shout outs in the, in the chat. I love it. So. Yvonne, Katie, you ready to answer some questions? Okay, so the first one that has cropped up over and over, and I think you could probably give everybody just a simple explanation, is uh, what is an override? Yvonne, you want to take that one? Sure. Um, override is basically um, extra commission that you get even from with one team member, you're both active, you promote to senior consultant, moving forward to team leader, you get even more, director, you get more, advanced director, and so forth. So override is basically extra cash 
on your check when you and your team member are working their business. And you can find all the details in the resource library on DASH. Uh, all you have to do is look for the career plan chart. Thank you. Yvonne, stay right where you're at because the next question I want to ask is for you as well because I believe you covered the four tips. I yes, think it yes. Be, huh? Yes, yes. Yes. And they, uh, they want to know what those were again. Could you briefly go over those? Of course, no problem. So number one is make it personal. So we always like to use their name. We say why we reached out to them. If it's a new contact, um, you might say why you think they'd be great doing Pampered Chef. Um, number two is be excited, right? So the more excited you are, the more excited they are. Um, mm -hmm. Number three is the kiss. Keep it simple, sister, or keep it simple, sir. So we don't. We talked about not having to scroll the message and not saying too much information. Be excited about just one thing. And most importantly, number four is ask a question at the end, which is basically a way to prompt response instead of it sort of just being in nowhere land, like what do I do next kind of thing. Thank you, Yvonne. Katie, another question that's come up over and over again is, how do I recruit without feeling pushy? Yes, yeah, so I love this one because I think that everybody kind of starts out with that fear. And I know I definitely did. And I would say really just finding finding things that the host is doing well, complimenting them on those things, and having a real conversation, right? We're not robots. We're not going in and just copy and pasting every single message to every single person, the same thing over and over and over again. Right. Get to know them, have that conversation, and have that back and forth. And they should be talking more than you are talking. Again, don't make them scroll through your message with all this information overload. <laughs> yeah, I think, were you the one who taught me? slow the scroll or whatever <laughs> somebody did. Thank you. Um, and so as long as you're there, um, how do you get them to see the benefits of being a consultant if they just shut, shut you down once you, you know, you tell them they have to purchase at least a small kit to be a consultant. So they just like cut you off at the knees when you're uh, offering the business. Yeah, I would say, you know, if, I would try to unpack that and try to find out what their objection is at that point. You know, yeah. ask lots of questions and figure out, okay, if they're shutting you down and they're just saying, no, there's a reason behind it. And there's an objection in there that you haven't been able to get out and overcome yet. So you got to figure out what that is. Again, it goes back to building that relationship and having those conversations and, and making sure that you're, you're making it personal and you're finding out exactly what they're feeling and what they're thinking. So Katie, you know, one of the things that I think concerns a lot of new consultants is how do I ask a question in a way that doesn't make them feel like I am pressuring them or being pushy. So I say to you, for example, um, I, yeah, I, I just don't have the money to do this or I, I can't afford the kit or whatever you hear. How do you, how do you ask the question in a way that I'm not feeling like you didn't hear me? Um, well, I think that goes back to, you know, validate and mm -hmm. then um, overcome and ask that, that, that system that I kind of follow for my messages mm -hmm. and the validate part is probably the most important part, making sure that you're saying, you know, I understand what you're saying and, you know, a money one for me, that's a big one to try to overcome because, you know, if they don't have the money, then they don't have the money. And you might feel like, well, what am I supposed to say? I can't just give them the money, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> and so a lot of the times for that specific type of um, objection, I try to just um, talk to them and I ask them, you know, um, I talk to them about the kit credit. And so I say, you know, did you know you can actually get a coupon off one of our new consultant kits? And I talk about how that works and I ask them if it was just $49, would you be able to afford that? Could we make that happen? Um, if that's still an issue, you can ask them, you know, how about we brainstorm some ideas to raise some money? Does that sound like a good idea? And you can help them brainstorm some ideas. Um, I borrowed money from my dad when I signed up. So, you know, there are ways. There are ways. Great. So it's really just listening and not everybody's still going to say yes. Um, I know the kit credit coupon has come up over and over and um, 
if you look at your host planner and host rewards, um, it's a part of the program. So um, every everybody has the opportunity to turn part of their free product value into a kit credit based on sales. Okay, because I don't want to spend too much time there. Uh, so Yvonne? Yes. Big, lots of questions about turning uh, a, a party host, uh, turning that party into a launch party in a legit way. So, you know, some of the questions had to do with, I, um, orders have already gone in, you know, how, who gets the, you know, you know all the ins and outs. So what is the best practice for encouraging a host to turn their party into a launch, when should that take place? I think definitely before the party starts. Mm -hmm. It's it's I I mean I don't know how other teams work. I know everyone is a little bit different on this, but that's kind of our rule of thumb for our parties is basically you be sure that you've asked her at least once already once her party you know before her party starts and at that point she does have opportunity to make it her kickoff party if she purchases the kit and then we change it up that way. There's others that do want to want to do the business after orders already have come in because they're kind of like, oh yeah, well, I didn't realize my party was going to be this great. Okay, can I have all the sales now kind of thing? But I think to be fair to both, I think that if, um, if they are at 300 or 400 to use the kit credit of the 25 or the 50 off, you could stop the party and submit it at that point. And mm -hmm. they could take the kit credit and then when they you know, when they continue to gather orders, then right. those orders would be there. So they're almost kind of like double dipping. So it just kind of depends. Like there are other times when they are reaching for a specific level. Maybe if we have double free going on or something like mm -hmm. that, they want to take all of that extra product. They want to take advantage of that. So it just depends on the situation. But typically, I would say we try to sign them before the party even starts and any, any, and any orders even come in. Thank you. Yes. You know, one of the things, um, Katie, you might be able to answer this, or Yvonne, I, you know, I don't want to single anybody out. You know, one of the concerns that new consultants have about recruiting is, I don't know enough. How can I possibly support a new consultant? So what would you recommend to somebody who is hesitant about offering the opportunity when they're just brand new? Yeah, I would say talking a lot. Go ahead, Katie, and then if Yvonne wants yes. to add on, by all means. Yes. Yeah. No, go, girl. <laughs> I would say um, reaching out to your upline and finding out what type of system they have in place for onboarding new consultants. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure that if you ask, they would more than willing, more than willing, be more than willing to share with you what their onboarding system is. Um, there is also lots and lots of onboarding training in Dash. There is so much good stuff in there um, to help you be able to help your new consultants um, be successful right out of the gate and reach the goals that they're setting. Yeah. Dash is golden. Yvonne, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I always just say we, you know, we will help you with everything, honestly and truly. There's so many great rewards, and there is responsibility in earning those rewards. So I, I'm always, I'm always want, always want to make sure that that's clear to the new consultant that they don't get anything just for somebody signing on their team. They actually have to partner with me, and then we can help them together, and they feel supported and ready to go. You know, once they know we will do training calls together, we will walk through this together, and then they will get rewards. So, so we do that lots. You know, once we kind of just explain what your responsibilities are, and we know that it's a process, and you know, with one and two and more, and then you know, they can get all of these especially if they're a new consultant, they get all those fast track rewards, which is very exciting. Exactly. So there's lots of rewards and benefits to recruiting, uh, but right. there's also resources to help you, regardless of what you know. And um, there's no shame in saying, hey, that's a great question. Nobody ever asked me. Let's, let's go find out together. I used to do that quite a bit. So wonderful. Right. Um, so what outline were you talking about? Somebody talked about an outline. That was one of the questions that came up it's hard to tell from where I think that was Katie talking about her um, her outline as to how she how she chats um, with people about the business right Katie yep yeah that's what I would assume mm -hmm. um, so yeah that's the over it's the um, 
validate, overcome, and ask a question. So that's kind of the outline that I follow for my messages. This prevents me from, you know, word vomiting all over them and giving them way more information than they need. And it also just helps me to make sure um, that I'm not getting too excited and just plowing over what they said and not letting them know that I did read their message and I did hear them and I understand. So validate, overcome, and ask a question. Great. Um, Yvonne, let me ask you another yes. question. Um, you know, we have, we've had some training recently on the FTC rules um, and what we can and cannot say. Yeah, Katie, you're, you're free to answer too, but I, how has that changed and, and has it really changed too much how you present the opportunity in your parties? During my live rescue demos, I did do a <laughs> Q&A and I had mentioned that. Obviously, that was, this was recorded before this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but <laughs> since then, when I went live, I actually did change it up where I used um, what we call a Y bag, like W-H-Y, like why you may want to do Pampered Chef. So again, I always feel like focusing on their needs and you know their reason is always best anyway. But I did do last live where I had a bag of different objects and I pulled out each one like there was a hundred dollar bill and I said what do you guys think that might mean and then they would guess and then I gave them a card and then at the end I just shuffled the cards and picked a winner but basically I said you you know new consultants make about a hundred dollars per party and you can even start your business for just about a hundred dollars how exciting is that you know so it was just all about them you know, because there are many reasons why people want to join the business. So my reason definitely, you know, it could be very different than somebody else's. So it's always just best to focus on why they might, might want to. So using that bag and different items that just kind of opens it up to what they might be able to connect with even better than what I, what I say about myself. Yeah. And, and we strongly encourage everybody who is going to go down this recruiting path because truly it is the single most rewarding aspect of your business um, that you you know review the stir article that's available about that just so you make sure you're uh, all legit thank you Yvonne Katie First, what suggestions could you give that we could have done how can I make myself feel more confident in recruiting so this sounds like somebody's just not doing it because they don't feel confident about it what would you tell them yeah, that makes sense. It's hard to do something if you feel like you don't know how and you don't have the confidence to do those things. Um, and you might not like you learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You might not like my answer, but honestly, it's just to do it. Make that decision that you're just going to do it and um, do it scared. That's something that we say um, in our organization. Do it scared. Um, I also have a thing in my personal team, it, um, let's puke together. Basically, we set goals that make us feel like we're going to puke, and that's how we grow and how we change. And sometimes you have to just take a deep breath and just send the message and um, just know that it's going to all work out in the end. Like That's how you get the experience, and the experience is how you gain that confidence, really. Yeah. We used to say, do the thing you fear the most, and that's the end of the fear, because, right? Yeah. So someone here says that they have somebody who is possibly interested in the business right now, Katie. She says she knows that she just doesn't she she just doesn't know enough people. How would you help her overcome that? I think that's a common concern. Yeah, so I would let them know that one of the most important parts of this business is expanding your network and this is something that I'm super um, when I started, my circle is all pretty much below poverty line um, people, and Pamper Chef is not at the top of their even able to afford list. And so for me, expanding my network, network was super important, And but it is totally doable. And so I just let them know all you need is a handful of people that are willing to host a party, which is free, right? They don't mm -hmm. have to spend a dime if they don't want to. And then you get bookings off of those parties and bookings off of those parties until before you know it, your network has expanded so much and you don't even know any of your hosts personally. So yeah. you don't have to know, you know, a whole bunch of hundreds of people to run this business and be successful. I, th I think in an earlier workshop, they said you want to get past those friends and get into the strangers as quick as you can. Yeah. I had, um, Yvonne, I have a question for you. 
Not that yes. either of you couldn't answer it. I'm just trying to be fair as I can. <laughs> no worries. Uh, how do you choose which guests to approach? You know, like who's the rock star or who is the rock star guest? Who's the curious guest? That type of thing. Or when no one is a rock star guest, curious, or there's crickets in the party. Oh, there has to be somebody, right? <laughs> there has to be somebody. Um, but honestly, Julie, this is why it's smarter to run multiple parties because then you have then you know, your odds go up. But and I and I did read in um, in the chat that people were asking about the curious um, lead. Mm -hmm. So that is a little bit harder one to figure out sometimes. Um, I think that if you're you know if your party outlines are interactive, you're having fun. They're having fun. You know, you, you've got your host on board. You're partnering with her through host coaching. She's going to, you know, she's going to be coming in. And when she does, I think that's more likely for her guests to participate. So the rock stars are kind of easy to see, right? Who's commenting on everything? You know, who's like, you know, the first one to say the word of the party every single time, this kind of stuff. Um, but I really sort of look for the one who isn't speaking very much, but maybe just asking smart questions. And she doesn't come in all the time, but you can tell she's a thinker. So that's not my personality. So, um, so that's why it's a little bit harder for me. But I've learned over the years that because there's so many different personality traits, you don't just want to find somebody like you. You do have to look for other people who are completely different because guess what? They can be super successful in this business too. Isn't that the joy of it for sure, right? So, yeah. um, so I would say for me, the one-on-one -on -one connections, when I ask them to, um, to message me, to friend me, that's when I am starting to build that relationship. And there are more people sometimes you know more likely to do that and have the one-on-one -on -one conversation with you than posting something in a party or commenting that they might be interested because they're nervous or they might be you know shy um, to even say it in front of other people so I would say that one-on-one -on -one connection and building the relationship is key for especially finding that person in your party okay you two have been amazing and I wish we could spend hours answering all of these questions. But I want to close this workshop. And Yvonne, because we have you highlighted right now, I'm going to start with you. Um, these, um, so many of these folks are brand new consultants. And all of this is brand new. What would you say to us to inspire us to just do it? Just recruit, just share the business. What would you say? Honestly and truly, I think when you make that flip in your mind that recruiting has nothing to do with yourself. Mm -hmm. Most of the time people are nervous to recruit. It's because I feel like I'm not knowledgeable enough. I don't know if I have enough time. I, 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 right? So really and truly, if you just completely take the focus off of yourself and really really look into their hearts and see how their lives can be changed from this business. It's super powerful and it's definitely the best part of the business. So I would just definitely say focus on them versus yourself. Well, and if on that, certainly your heart and certainly the reason you are one of our top recruiters in the company. So, um, because you do recruit not for what, how it benefits you, but how it benefits others. Thank definitely. you for sharing that. Katie, how, what do you want to leave everybody with today? Um, I would definitely echo what Yvonne said because all of that was so spot on and so true. And I would also say, you know, all throughout National Conference, you're seeing all these people who are at the top and they're being recognized for these amazing things. All of the, you know, all of the top leaders are, you're seeing their faces and you're- Thank you. <laughs> if you're anything like I am though you're just you're you're looking at what they're doing and you're so impressed and I know last year I was sitting at conference watching all this recognition and I thought oh my gosh they're doing such amazing things and it seems so unreachable and now this year I'm sitting here and I'm recognized for some of these things and then some of these other things I'm still sitting here thinking wow I want to do that too and if you want more for your business recruiting really is the way to get it and it really is the answer for for you and your business but also like Yvonne said for all the people that you're going to help um you know like I said earlier it's I didn't know I needed this business I didn't know what it was going to do for me and 
every single person who I've heard their story has echoed the same sentiment. Like I had no idea what I was getting into when I started this, but it's been amazing for so much more even just than the money. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's, it's something special. It certainly is. I cannot thank you enough personally. Um, it has been such a joy to work with you. Our, you're both amazing leaders, uh, amazing at sharing this business, so clearly from the heart. Um, so on behalf of the home office team, as well as everybody who's watching, we wanna say a big, big thank you. And uh, I hope everybody's giving you some great kudos in the chat because I can't quite see that right now. But I wanna thank you again for all your hard work and help today. Congratulations to both of Thanks you. Thanks for the opportunity to share. Thank you very much. <laughs> Seeing there's so many comments. Thank you guys so, so much. So uh, yeah. thank you. We, we appreciate it. And, and uh, we're, we are excited to share with you all today. So thanks. Yay. Absolutely. It's an honor. Yeah. For me, especially, I have to tell you that. So thank you. <laughs> all right, everybody. Have a great evening. We'll see you all at the dance party. Woo -woo. Thank <laughs> you.